for a streamed game. This is the first time I'm seeing the actual Spectre Squad in action. And it's going to be a good game because it is against Morfeo, who is a great player from Spain. Spanish national champion, has tons of accolades over in Europe. Great scum player, and he is using a scum point manipulation list that is just taking the meta by storm over there. So it's going to be good to see how the Todd squad can match up against a top tier list. These guys are playing on Tarkin Initiative Labs B, Abandoned Research. So there's going to be uh, a lot of extra weapons going around. We'll see if the Todd squad can keep up because they don't really have a lot of good action economy on this map to go pick up those extra weapons. Meanwhile, I think Morpheo's list is pretty good here. He's got the good side for one thing. Greedo has a nice little hole to hide in there. Um, he's got plenty of targets to shoot at, though. Zeb is an open target right now, and Ezra and Kanan, you can see, are sticking together as they should be. Um, they're actually kind of out of the way, though, which is, I think, a good choice for Don Vito. Um, it's set up to be a really good match, and we're going to see how it goes, so tune on in. This, by the way, still round one. Um, we are pretty early. We have Jabba has gone and focused. Um, and 3PO has also gone and focused. So that puts Greedo and Hondo focused. If you're not familiar with Hondo, he is a six cost figure. He uh, has a blue, red, green attack. So pretty decent attack. It's... Uh, Onar's attack pool, which is very strong. He's got 9 health, which is not a lot for 6 points. So he's a bit fragile, but he does have 5 speed, which is good. He's got a surge for plus 1, which isn't great with that blue-green attack pool. Um, and he also has a surge for plus 2 accuracy, which can be useful for him. Uh, so focus maybe isn't amazing on him because he doesn't have a lot of surges to spend it on. Um, but it can help push his attack range up by about two or three uh, range, thanks to that surge for accuracy. He also has a ability called Negotiate. I believe that's what it's called. It's a little blurry. Uh, it's when you declare an attack, apply plus two damage to the attack results, unless the defender pays you two victory points. So basically, every attack is forcing the defender to either take plus two damage or pay two victory points. They can't pay victory points they don't have. So early in the game, it's going to be plus two damage. So blue, red, green with plus two is just an amazing, amazing attack pool. Very strong. Greedo is going to go ahead and move up, picking up a red uh, weapon which means he's going to be rolling green, 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 red, which is very scary for this Spectre squad. Greedo is a absolute boss on this map. I think Don Vito is playing it very safe by taking this third row down here. I think it's a pretty safe way to move up on Tarkin Initiative Labs, but it does allow Morpheo to take those bottom, those top two rows which have lots of weapons to grab, including that big red weapon that Greedo just picked up. Um, expect to see the Smuggler actually uh, becoming a vital piece of this map as he picks up maybe a green die next round. Um, we still have Sabine left. She's actually in range to get attacked. Um, Morpheo could have, if he wanted to, selected to move up Greedo and Hondo to take shots at her. She is the most fragile figure in the list besides Chopper. So leaving her a little bit exposed is a bit questionable. I think she's in a, a, a vital part of the list for cleanup duty. So she doesn't want to be the first one to die. In my opinion, you should move up Ezra, Zeb, and Kanan. And then bring her in behind to do the cleanup work. Maybe even bringing Chopper up late in the game 
to get some annoying attacks because red green plus one is actually a very respectable attack so yes i think uh chopper can be part of that cleanup crew as well and be respectable uh so sabine is going to activate now and she's actually going to move up and pick up a weapon it looks like I think if she picks up a weapon, I think this is a major blunder here. This gives Morpheo way too much flexibility to attack her before she gets her value. I really think that leaving her in this spot is a huge mistake. He still has his own Sabine left to go and his own uh, Hondo. So that's two big attacks that she's going to be soaking up. Uh, plus a grenade from Morpheus Savine, so maybe he's just moving her up this way to toss a grenade onto Greedo as she moves into a safer position. I think that would be the better play. Uh, I I can't imagine that Don Vito wants to leave her here. So actually, let's see how many movement points she's used so far. One, two, three, four, five. So it looks like she is going to be doing a double move here. Since she's already moved five spaces, I guess that means that Don Vito has selected to double move with her. He is dropping a grenade, which is going to do only one damage to Greedo, but it's a free grenade. What can you ask for? Those things are going to average uh, about one and a half damage. Uh, a little less than that, actually, because there is one side of the green die that does zero. So eight-sixths of a damage is the average. Oh, and looks like Don Vito has drawn Rebel Graffiti in his starting hand, which is amazing, actually, for this list. Uh, it's two points now, and he gets to redraw it. This is just a monster card here. It can just absolutely wreck your opponent. Um, Sabine also gets to safety, which means Hondo doesn't have a safe move. He's going to move up and pick up a green uh, weapon, which means he's going to be rolling green green, green, red, blue, which is, holy moly, that is a crazy attack pool. Morpheo here just dominating the objectives for now, but Don Vito playing very conservatively. He's going to move up safely, and he has the better valued figures, so he's going to try to convert that value into kills. Uh, Morpheo moves his own Sabine up to throw her grenade, which is going to do one damage as well to both Zeb and Sabine, I believe. It's uh, anywhere within three spaces. Morpheo is actually sticking to this smuggler-type box around 3PO. I think that is a pretty dangerous situation to be in, considering there are free Sabine grenades going around so um, 3PO could potentially get knocked out somehow and then that would leave all of those figures kind of exposed um, he does tuck Sabine away behind a corner which is a little bit better than where she was at And Don Vito still has Ezra left. He has not used his Spectre Cell um, attack yet. So he could tap that uh, to, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Um, 
Unfortunately, he can't open the door with Ezra. That would open up a free Sabine attack with Spectre Cell. Uh, unless he has some kind of movement card, he might have Force Rush, which would set it up. Or he could have something like uh, Urgency, which would do it. I'm not sure if he would spend Heart of Freedom to do that, but that would also be a possibility as well. He doesn't have to worry about any harmful conditions, it seems like. Except for maybe a Toxic Dart dealing weakened, but that's not something you necessarily should be worried about. Um, in fact, he, he probably would rather move Zeb up two spaces to get the free attack. Just because Zeb likes to be closer than Sabine. But either way, if he could find a way to open that door, it would be really helpful. Looks like he's not going to be able to do that, unfortunately. Um, since he didn't have a movement card, one thing he possibly could have done was he might have been able to tap Spectre Cell earlier just to give someone movement points. Like, he could have probably given Ezra himself some movement points, so then he could open the door, although I'm not sure that would open up an attack for anyone. So, instead he just goes with Ezra, and he, looks like he's picking up a yellow die. Um, he doesn't have... Any green or red dies to choose from, unfortunately. So he has to settle for the yellow. Um, it's obviously not the optimal dice to choose from. Um, compared to the blue, since Ezra gets a free reroll, it's about on par with the blue. I probably would have taken the blue over the yellow, though, because between his two other yellow dice, he's going to have plenty of surges. And look at the difference in command card control. Morpheo played planning round one. He also has hidden from us. Devious and Temporary Alliance, so no black market. But he is holding seven cards now, compared to five for uh, Don, and that is only five because Sabine is redrawing his uh, graffiti. Again, I think Sabine is in probably too aggressive of a spot, especially since he has Rebel Graffiti. You want to keep her safe so she keeps getting that value every round. Because once she dies, Rebel Graffiti is only worth two more victory points. Now some command cards come out. Set a trap coming out from Don Vito. Some interesting choices here. I'm not sure exactly which tile he's picking. Sounds like the central tile, but I'm not sure which he means. Probably... This one here that goes in a little plus sign. So at the end of the round, he can interrupt to perform an attack there. I'm not sure why he's picking that tile. Uh, set a trap is a bit wonky to use. I might just put it on the deployment. That forces his whole group to move outside of the deployment zone or suffer a free attack. Uh, I think set a trap can work. With Spectre Cell, it's an aggressive enough list to do something like play it on the enemy's deployment zone. I just think it's too situational to use, so I don't really consider it a top-tier card. Uh, but that is the card that gets played, especially because there's so much competition for zero-cost cards within Spectre Cell. There's so many good zero-cost cards. It's, it's almost impossible to fit all the ones you want. Ezra is going to use his brash movement now at the start of the round. I'm not sure who 
Don is going to be targeting. He wants to stay away from Greedo and Hondo. They are very scary attackers. If he can somehow avoid them and focus down Morpheo's other units, that would probably be a good strategy, especially if he can kill Sabine. Um, but Greedo is a... He's going to be such a nuisance against the Spectre Cell just because he's almost always going to find a melee target or a target with short range that he's going to be able to attack without penalty. He can also apply Bleed, which is pretty good against the Spectre Cell. Although they don't mind milling cards so much. Both players there controlled one objective, so they each gain two points from that. This is a map where uh, controlling the objectives isn't quite as important as keeping your guys safe. So don't be tempted to um, force a control of this objective here, because that leaves you completely exposed to either side. I think they're both playing it very good and very safe. Hondo right now has a clear line of sight at Zeb, a clear and safe line of sight. Um, Hera actually has a decent attack because she gets that plus one damage, so it could be Hera versus Hondo here, which, depending on who attacks first, could go either way, to be honest. Hondo only has nine health and no block token, whereas Hera has seven health and a block token. The main difference here is Hondo's focused, and he has an extra, I believe it was a red die that he picked up, so he could potentially one-hit Hera. Hera can't one-hit him, so got to be careful around there. But either way, Hera could use tools for the job or something to try to one-shot Hondo. Blue, green, yellow, plus one, and a red. It's quite possible to do enough damage. Since Morpheo has initiative, Don Vito can't be too aggressive here. He wants to make his big play at the start of round three, probably. The nice thing about the Spectre squad is they actually do have decent Alpha Strike potential. Especially if you're using something like a Strength in Numbers. Because you could activate someone like Hera, get her in position to add her call the shots, maybe even get a big attack off with her. And then you can use Spectre Cell during Hera's activation to get an Ezra or Kanan or Zeb attack, or even Sabine. And then you activate whoever's in position to do the most damage, maybe even using Pummel. In that scenario, you, you could potentially get a Hera attack and three Ezra attacks for a total of four attacks and just one set of activations before your opponent gets to go. So that could be a massive alpha strike. So the potential's there. Even though they don't have the Rebel Care Package, they are going to be able to dish out a massive amount of damage in a small amount of time. So get ready to see that. Uh, we're going to right now see how their survivability lasts because that's going to be the real test. Can they survive this big Hondo activation? Looks like he's going to be going for Zeb, which Don Vito's probably feeling really good about. Zeb is the tankiest figure of the group. He's got 15 health. He rolls a black die, and he has a block. He's getting attacked by Hondo, who I believe is rolling blue, red, green, red. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six spaces away is not enough to guarantee range by any means, so this definitely could whiff. Or maybe he'll use the surge for accuracy. Being focused, he'll definitely have an extra surge, probably. But still, Zeb is totally fine taking hits. He's probably the least priority target 
for Morpheo, but he's the only one that Morpheo can get to safely. So he's going to go for this shot. Um, I think this could be a problem because Morpheo doesn't really... Or, yeah, Morpheo doesn't really have a way to follow this attack up. Zeb is perfectly comfortable sitting back, maybe even taking another shot from Greedo. But even if Zeb dies here, I think that's still a win for Don Vito that Zeb is the target because that means Kanan and Ezra are going to be able to stick together for longer. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see how this attack goes. Here comes a focused, amped up, weaponized Hondo attack against Zeb. We'll see if uh, Don Vito decides to give him the plus two damage or spend his two victory points. It actually looks like he already decided he's going to spend two victory points so this attack does not have two damage. Of course, the victory points are vastly more important at the end of the game, but at the start of the game, it's that survivability that's important. So I like that choice to spend the victory points right now, especially because he has Rebel Graffiti, so he's got plenty plenty of uh, victory points to spare. Element and tools coming out. There's still no way this is going to do 15 damage, even though he's rolling two reds now, a green against no defense die. It's 15 damage. Zeb is an absolute tank, and Honda's just not going to be able to put all the damage through. He's not a hunter either, so we don't have to worry about assassinate here. Um, looks like a defensive card coming out. Maybe brace for impact. Uh, actually, it's going to be negation on the element. Technically, you are not supposed to play negation after another command card has been played that would be a missed opportunity but sometimes players will play their command cards so fast that um, you don't necessarily have time to get the negation out so in that instance you should always give the benefit of the doubt to the defender make sure when you're playing this game in a tournament setting you play your offensive cards one at a time, especially if they cost zero, so your opponent has time to react. And it's a good thing that he played negation there because he is adding three extra defense from that. So a total of five thanks to his extra armor. So this is going to be one, two, three four damage going through looks like only four damage after all of that just four damage what a beast what a beast zeb is and now hondo is in kind of a vulnerable spot uh sabine could safely take a shot at him and retreat the trick is don still wants to avoid Greedo. Zeb is no longer in kill range for Greedo, I think. He'd have to do 10 damage. It's possible, but Greedo is probably going to have to whip out Assassinate and Heightened Reflexes, which it's unlikely that Morpheo has all those cards in his hand. Um... Hondo is vulnerable, but he does have a lot of defensive cards going for him. He does have uh, on the lamb, potentially. Hondo's card itself is very defensive and very good. He could negate four damage with his card and become refocused. So he does have a lot of defensive options there. So that's a lot for Don Vito to think about when he selects who he wants to target. Right now, it might be the right choice to just stall a bit, maybe go with Chopper, or maybe go with Hera to move her up so the other figures can use her bonus. I think if I was in this position, I'd probably go with Hera right now.
Excuse me for a minute. Defcon, if you're watching, pay attention to anything I miss. I'm going to go grab a drink. Have I missed anything? Looks like the same board position we left it in. Looks like Don hasn't done anything. Is everyone connected? Yep. So, what's the hold up here? By the way, while we have this downtime, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. Uh, the other day on uh, the Zion's Finest Slack channel, which you should all join, by the way, because it's great. Uh, a bunch of new people just joined my Patreon, and man, that just made my day. It was really nice to feel the gratitude of the community for um, putting out content, so I just want to take this moment to thank all you guys that joined my patreon i really appreciate you guys uh and everybody should check out the zion's finest channel by the way because it's awesome especially if you like salt because s me and some of the other guys on there that's where we like to uh sh shake our salt shakers if you know what i mean uh so head on over there for a good time and some interesting conversations about the game and about other board games and all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay, looks like we have uh, Era's gonna go. Um, I think that's probably the the uh, most the, the play that makes the most sense, it's pretty conservative, doesn't expose anybody else. Doesn't give Greedo a good target to shoot at. You can just move up and attack. One, two, three, four. Sit right on the terminal. And she's going to go ahead and do one, two, three. Only three damage, it looks like. Decent defensive roll there. Um. But uh, three pierce two ends up being three damage. Um, so now Hondo is definitely in kill range. Again, he's he's not super tanky. He only has nine health, but he does have those defensive cards. Three damage is not enough to pull the trigger on on the lamb or his own card. So he's just comfortable to. Leave him sitting there with six health left. And Morpheo, or sorry, Don has to figure out if he's worth sinking some more attacks into, or is there any way he can take him out with unmitigatable damage, such as um, Chopper, I think, can bump someone for damage, and Sabine can throw grenades for unmitigatable damage. Maybe he's holding on to Force Surge or something like that, so. Some unmitigatable damage would be really good against Hondo. We have a lot of Salt Lords over there on the Slack channel. 
Uh, but it's all in good fun. I enjoy the salt personally. I have a very, uh, I have a palate for saltiness, you might say. Leighton here has a palate for pets. Pets are his favorite thing. He loves attention. He loves that he's the star of the show with this new HD camera. Really bringing some flavor to the stream here. So thanks for that, Leighton. What are you doing? He's such a weirdo sometimes. Um, what did we have here? A pass? Oh. Yeah, so the Spectre team only has six activations, so he's going to go ahead and pass. Morpheo has nine activations, so Don can pass a couple more times. Um, 3 po is going to go ahead and focus up Morpheo's Sabine. Jabba also has the potential to apply a focus. Let's keep in mind here that if Don Vito was running Doubt, he could have already canceled either Hondo or Greedo's focus. So that's something to keep in mind because we are still in the phase where we're trying to figure out if extra armor is better than Doubt. Right now, extra armor gave Zeb plus one health, but potentially minus two health from the focus that went into that attack. So right now it's a net minus one for extra armor over doubt. Chopper's abilities, because he doesn't get played that much, so we might not be familiar. He has an ability Ram, move up to two spaces and choose an adjacent figure. If it's hostile, roll a green die. It suffers damage equal to the damage results. If it's a small figure, you can push it up to one space. He also has System Shock, which does two damage and a strain to a hostile figure next to a terminal. So, Morpheo had command card control but he's quickly losing control of his own terminal and it's a really dangerous proposition for him to leave anybody close to that terminal so actually the specter cell which we have all been theorizing suffers from command card draw maybe Don Vito is figuring out a way to mitigate that right now by taking control of the enemy terminal I think that's a good play and I think since this list does have such a small area of control type uh, strength, I believe you could put that to good use on this map, definitely, but also on Uskru. Um, although Chopper is going to be pretty out of the fight there, but that's okay. You're probably going to lose Chopper. Um, well, actually, you know, Maybe it wouldn't work on Uskru because your list would be too spread out. Um, but it definitely works here because the terminals are so close. On Moss Isley, you might be able to crowd your opponent out of their own terminal spot by pushing them back to their deployment zone. Um, it's definitely a strategy that's viable, though. It should be something you think about, um, especially because Ezra can use his brash to retreat as well so it might be okay to move him up at the end of a round to sit on a terminal chopper doesn't have a target for his system shock so he's going to run 
and take control of an objective here. It's kind of wonky because now he's not in range to go back to that terminal for a system shock if the opportunity presented itself. But he could move up and push one of his teammates, potentially. Honestly, if I'm Don right now, I'm not worried right now because Greedo's focus against any other list would be terrifying because he could finish someone off in one hit. But he can't finish Zeb off in one hit. He's probably not going to get shots at anybody else. I wouldn't even mind moving some of my figures towards Morpheo now aggressively, especially because Don is theoretically getting... Uh, take initiative, or sorry, initiative in round three. He did blow his negation on element of surprise. It ended up working out for him. But that does leave him completely vulnerable to take initiative. But you still have to take that chance. You should move up aggressively when you're about to get initiative. We'll see if he does that. He could opt to just open the door with Ezra and let Zeb move in and get, get his free attack off. And then Sabine also has room to move in and attack. Not sure what these guys are saying. I don't speak Spanish very well. Or whatever language this is. Yeah, not sure what they're saying there. We have any foreign language speakers in the stream right now? Looks like the door is going to open. Sabine opened it. Oh, so the door got touched, but it did not open. Zero damage grenade there for Sabine. Maybe she'll just do her move and heal action now. Really a lackluster activation there. But he does get to play Rebel Graffiti again, which again is just an amazing card.
So two grenade attacks there, totaling one damage. That's way below the average. Should be at about three. But it's only going to one figure, so it's not a huge deal. He is going to take a shot at Hondo here. He rolls. Forgot that Hondo was a target. He rolls blue, green, green. He also has... He does not have a search for accuracy, but... Terra is within... Terra's not within three. Luckily, he gets range. One, two, three, four, five, six. It was not a guarantee for range there. One, two, three, four, five, uh, and one search because the other one got canceled. He has a search for Pierce too, so that'll be five damage, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, Pierce two. So if he had attacked from one space back, he would have gotten that kill there. With Hera. Instead, Hondo lives with one health. He does have plenty of ways to take care of that one health, though. He could use his grenade next round on it. So it should be five damage. One, two, three, four, five. Here's two. Morpheo keeps forgetting about that plus one specter damage, which is significant. Man, just one space away from Hera. Could have gotten that kill. Or at least threatened it. Again, Honda do, does have some defensive shenanigans. Um, yeah, Hondo is in really big trouble now because there is a lot of unmitigated damage that could come out. Man, I need to translate this stuff. Uh, Vito thinks that Morpheo has on the lamb. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're talking about, even with the translation.
Sabine retreats to safety, but she could still pop out with Spectre Cell. She looks like she moved an extra. Sp oh, she's mobile. I keep forgetting that she's mobile. That is actually quite helpful on this map. Kind of a lull in the game right now. So I'll be at Nova open on Saturday. Feel free to stop by and say hi if you see me. I'm always happy to meet new people, especially at these events. The whole community is awesome in my opinion. So yeah, give me a give me a shout. Um I don't haven't settled on a list yet, so I should probably be playing this week instead of watching, but what can you do? Even if I do play this week, it's going to be really tempting to play the Spectre Squad um, instead of uh, something I could actually play at Nova. The new stuff is not legal yet for national-level tournaments. Should probably stick with um, Scum Hunters just because that's what I'm comfortable with, but I'm tempted to take uh, Rebel List. But I've even been thinking about taking Vader list. I think Vader's an interesting list. I haven't piloted it too much, so it could be fun to try something new-ish. But then again, it's U.S. Nationals, and I'm the defending champion. So uh, I also feel pretty responsible for taking a serious list that I'm comfortable with to defend my crown, kind of, you know. But we'll see how it goes. I'm really out of practice. I'm sure someone can usurp me. We will definitely see. Man. Look at Kanan coming all the way back. Setting up that Spectre Cell against Hondo. I, it seems pretty conservative to me. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it because Ezra kind of would like to get into the fray here. And this does leave Kanan as a target for Morpheus Sabine. Uh, his Onar is too far away to take a shot probably even with focus. He's pretty medium to short range attacker. So I think Kanan is relatively safe there. It's just, I'm not sure if I like spreading out the list like this. Finally, Greedo comes out. That really is what, uh, that's really what Don was waiting for. He couldn't really do much while Greedo was a threat. Looks like he's playing really aggressive with his Greedo too. It's going to be very important that Don Vito takes out Morpheo's Greedo before he takes too many shots against all these melee figures. I'm curious who he's going to go for because he's not going to finish Zeb off. Zeb can potentially do two attacks to him if he lives here. 
And I think it's very high probability that he does live. So we're going to have to see right here. Uh, I'm not sure if Morpheo has a better option. It's late over here. This is a dedication for you guys. This is all because of the uh, six extra patrons I have. I feel very dedicated and motivated to make more content. If uh, if you are watching and you're interested in my Patreon, patrons right now get um, exclusive first look access to articles I write. I'm going to start trying to uh, put out articles on a more consistent basis than before, especially now that I have a couple people that are paying for content. Um, so I'm going to try to start releasing content on Fridays for patrons and Mondays for everyone else. Uh, there is a ton to talk about, so I, ha I have no lack of ideas for content. Um, if you're interested, I am going to be releasing articles for each faction related to their Tyrants of Lothal deployment cards that came out. Uh, and I also will be writing up a battle report for Nationals, which again is Saturday. Um, and finally, I'll be adding to my um, Star Wars review of The Last Jedi. And besides all that, we'll, I'm sure there will be some creative list building stuff to talk about with all this new material that's just been released. So plenty of content all set up for the next couple weeks and months. Um, so, yep, if you're interested in getting the first look at any of that stuff, just hit, hit up the Patreon and you will get that. I'm going to try to think of some other Patreon exclusives I can afford to do. I'd like to give everybody something at Worlds. We'll see um, how that works out. Uh, and then I've been talking to some other people that run um, Patreons and they have uh, podcasts and they're telling me that it's good to release content that's exclusive for patrons forever. So there might be some just patron exclusive content that nobody else gets to see. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out. Um, very excited for the future of uh, the Roll for Damage site and this stream. Anyway, back to the game. It looks like Zeb attacked Greedo with slow on the draw. Greedo did not have any way to get a safe attack off there. But then Greedo shooting back with a red, green, 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 which is doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight damage. A massive attack, and Assassinate actually could finish the kill off here. That was a huge attack. Greedo dangerously living there with only one health left. It turns out that grenade was huge. Uh, that Sabine grenade, had it done more than the minimum zero damage, Greedo would be dead right now, and that would have been a parting shot instead of a regular attack. So Zeb doing some work there. It's Again, Zeb is one space away from Hera, so maybe some bad positioning here from Don Vito. Both Zeb and Sabine miss kills because Hera is unfortunately one space away for adding that extra damage. Um, and now two guys in range of unmitigatable damage. Looks like... It's really unfortunate that Chopper is so far away because he'd be the perfect person to go one, two, three, four. He's two spaces away from being able to just uh, push those guys to death. 
Sabine, of course, can grenade them to death. That would be good as well. They are both smugglers, so on the lamb is still a threat. Looks like Morpheo's not too worried about leaving his guys with one health left. Um, either he doesn't have on the lamb, or he's just uh, comfortable enough taking some more grenades. It's He has six cards and six in the deck. So a 50% chance that he's holding on the lamb. Also a 50% chance that he's holding take initiative. If he regains control of his terminal by the end of the round, he'll draw two more cards, giving him a 8 out of 12 chance to have take initiative, or 4 and 6, or 2 and 3, 66%. Now it looks like Zeb is going to move up and take his free attack, maybe, against Greedo. He doesn't probably want to trigger Greedo's parting blow yet. He probably would rather go attack Honda with his free attack. He is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He is within range of Hondo. Sabine, of course, could snipe him if he does that. But if he kills Greedo, he's probably just dead to Greedo's parting blow. Okay, what is happening here? Uh, Hondo is getting attacked. So this is a smart thing. Zeb attacks Hondo first, and now he can also get his free attack off on Greedo. So he could potentially kill both of these guys, even though Greedo will finish him off with his parting blow. This is a big activation for Hondo. Uh, for Zeb. This is going to put Don Vito ahead by a bunch. And a blank gets rolled. He just needs accuracy. Which he has. Uh, he, which he doesn't have. Oh, he does. Plus three accuracy. Zeb actually has very consistent accuracy. Wow, plus three and a green. That's a minimum of four. That's pretty good. And looks like, unfortunately, Hondo doesn't have either his card or on the lamb, so he is just going to die. If he did have on the lamb there, or sorry, if he did have his card there, he could easily have saved himself and become focused. Instead, he's just dead. Then again, if he did do that, um... Don Vito could have just tapped Spectre Cell to give Kanan an attack at him. So I don't think there was any way he was going to survive till the next round unless he got a couple dodges. 
Now an attack against Greedo. Did he not roll the attack? Greedo's dead and Zeb falls as well. Maybe he had a way to do an unmitigated damage there. Both shoot the messenger and celebration come out. I think celebration's pretty big, but shoot the messenger isn't super important against the Todd squad because they don't have amazing card draw. There's still 10 cards left in the deck. After shoot the messenger, there will be seven. It does give Morpheo a good idea of what's left in the deck. Um, revealing something like take initiative or on the land would be very useful information. Um, he, Morpheo might also be running out of time, uh, which means dishing three cards out would... Uh, get Morpheo into better position to play out of time. If For those of you who haven't been following the Tyrants of Lothal release, out of time is a new card that's mercenary only. Deal strain equal to the current round number, and it's not an action, and it can affect any figure within three spaces. So it's an amazingly strong card. Uh, it's possible that Morpheo is playing around with it, although I'm not sure if it's in the Vassal mod yet. Of course, it is much better if there are no cards in your opponent's deck, so Shoot the Messenger is one way to get closer to that. Doesn't look like Don Vito discarded the cards from Shoot the Messenger. Maybe he didn't get the message to do that. Sabine is going to come take a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 range shot here. Plenty of range, but mediocre attack. 4, 5. She does not have um, the extra damage from Spectre Cell. So it's going to be 3, 4, 5. 5 pierce 2 is good for 4 damage. It's not bad. Kanan could reroll if he wanted, but he can't do much better than two blocks, so he probably shouldn't do that. There is. There are two sides that are worse and one side that is better, so generally you don't reroll that unless you have to. Uh, I'm not sure if he added a block from extra armor there, but he could have. He does have one block token on himself. Even though Morpheo has only killed one figure, he has 17 victory points from Celebration. That is quite a good amount. And that's the strength of this, uh, this mercenary list. You only have to kill a couple things to get your value. 17 points from one kill and a couple objectives. Uh, it, that kill was worth 8 base. Jabba makes it 9. Shoot the mess, or Celebration makes it 13. His other victory points came from a Hondo attack. 
who stole two victory points, a four-point swing. Wait, is that how it works? It can't be. So, yeah, wow, that is a four-point victory point swing. Wow, that's that's actually much better than I thought. Hondo takes two victory points away from your opponent and gives them to you. That is a huge swing. Wow, how could you not just add the plus two damage every time? Four victory point swing is way too much. I would take the damage every time. I didn't realize that's how it worked. Honestly, that seems really, really strong. That is that is really good. Yeah, pay pay for victory points. That's crazy. That's like celebration on every attack. That is nuts. Wow, that's definitely worth two damage. Like, if you are going to spend the victory points... I mean, I don't know. That's... It, it better be a key piece that's, like, on the verge of dying or something if you're going to pay those victory points to keep them alive. I mean, jeez. Hondo, glass cannon for sure. I would not. I mean, he makes up his value after one and a half attacks. That's insane. At the end of the round, if you are in an opponent's deployment zone, that opponent loses two VPs and you gain two VPs. Limit once per mission. That's his other ability. Between that and his attack, if your opponent plays... If he spends two VPs for two damage on one attack, and Hondo does that, he's made back two victory points more than his value. That's that's insane. Wow, uh, I think I'm gonna have to reevaluate Hondo. That is just really, really strong. Very strong. For six points, that is so nuts. So the Spectre Cell is pretty spread out right now, which is suboptimal for sure. Don Vito wants to consolidate these guys together. Morpheo seems like he's behind on material, but is way ahead on points and is in a comfortable position here. Double move there from Onar. Um, Jabba has not gone yet. Oh, Jabba has gone. So, Morpheo presumably has take initiative because otherwise he might not have moved Onar up that aggressively. So he's probably going to take initiative and try to kill Kanan. But, on the other hand... Kanan could use Spectre Cell to move to an attack, so Morpheo is wisely going to move one space back to avoid Spectre Cell. Oh, no, uh, maybe not, actually. Oh, maybe he is. Yes, he's out of range of Kanan's Spectre Cell now.
All right, so what is happening? Take initiative comes out. Did Did Ezra not use his brash movement? Very awkward end of that round. Spectre Cell looks like it hasn't been tapped yet. Is he? Maybe he's not playing Spectre Cell. Maybe he's subbing in Hero. Wait, no, he's definitely playing Spectre Cell. Um, but he hasn't tapped it yet. It's a huge waste. Maybe a bit of a learning curve here for Don Vito, but he's missed two rounds where he potentially could have had attacks. Oh, Ezra is going to Brash. Ezra should have used Brash before Morpheo played Take Initiative. Now Morpheo is going to use his own R to move up and take a shot at Kanan. Kanan does have 14 health, and he has a built-in block. Should be good. I don't think Onar has an extra weapon either. Unless he's going to pick one up and shoot with it. Five range is not that far for one, two, three, four. So he can't use his surge for two damage because that would put him at three range. Uh, a very weak attack there. It's only going to be th four damage. What is Ezra doing next to Jabba, by the way? By the way, since we're keeping track, Doubt would have removed Onar's focus here. So that's another minus two damage from Doubt potentially. And meanwhile, extra armor has still just been worth one damage. So Doubt is winning by three damage right now. We're also facing a list that Doubt is good against. Doubt is not always going to face this kind of list, but against this list, Doubt is definitely better. He's also had a couple attacks that he could have probably made miss, including that one. He could have forced Onar to reroll the blue die, and then if he has tough luck, he could have thrown tough luck to cancel the whole attack. Pretty worth it for four damage. A single damage grenade is going to go off right in the middle of all four of these figures. Vito is leaving his Ezra exposed with only six health left. Pretty dangerous proposition. 
he is going to get to play Rebel Graffiti again, which, again, has just been massively huge. Consider that if Morpheo drew Rebel Graffiti instead of Vito, that would be a 12-point swing right now. Morpheo would have 25, and Don Vito would have 12. Uh, uh, he hasn't added the points from it yet, actually, so it would be 14 to 25. Just a massively different game if that's how it goes. We have had some people complaining that Rebel Graffiti is too strong and too random of an effect, and I tend to agree with them. Rebel Graffiti is such a swingy effect. Basically, it will win you the game if you draw it in your starting hand. For a zero-cost card, I think that's ridiculous. You, like, you can't play around it. You have to keep your fingers crossed that you draw negation. That's not interactive. That's just luck. So that's not a great element to add to the game. I think it's a zero cost card that's broken. And here it comes again for two more points. Uh, finally it gets negated. But not before it does four victory points and soaks up a negation. That is a great effect. Four victory points and a negation. That is just amazing for a zero cost card. That's not take initiative. Just really, really good. Sabine finishes off a Jawa with her attack. No dodges yet for uh, Morpheo. Um, Vito's list is a little vulnerable to the dodge. Now Morpheo is going to move his own Sabine up to try to finish off this Ezra before he can do any more damage. If he doesn't get the kill here... <coughs> excuse me. Sabine is a hunter, so Assassinate is still on the table. Two blocks against three, four, five, six, pierce two. That would be just enough for the kill. Vito a little unwise to just leave Kanan hanging there. I'm not sure how Morpheus... Sabine got the plus one. Oh, he used primary target to get that extra plus one. Big, big attack there. Primary target ends up definitely getting its value. I really don't like Vito's positioning. I think you have to keep Kanan and Ezra together. And plus he left Kanan out. And what did he accomplish at that position? I don't think Kanan got a single attack off this game. So really... Really a really poor showing there from Kanan. Kanan is the weakest of the squad, just from a points to value perspective. But, I mean, he gives you such useful bonuses. 
You know, he also could have re-rolled his defense die there. Um, and if he would have rolled two blocks, he would have still been alive. An extra damage against Sabine. Wow, this has just been a, a nightmare for Beto. And his Ezra is not in position to do anything. And meanwhile, now Morpheo is going to start pouring on the Rebel Graffiti. And Beto doesn't have a way to negate it. So this is just going to start eating up points for the rest of the game. Morpheo gets 8, 9 points there from killing Kanan. Plus 2 more from Rebel Graffiti. Finds himself just 10 away from the win. Just one more kill will do it. Um, unless Vito finds a way to finish off Sabine this round. Which I don't think is possible. He can finish her off at the start of next round though. But even then, this is an uphill battle. And this points manipulation list that Morpheo is running is just crazy good, it seems like. 4th Rush comes out for Ezra. Who's he going to go for? Uh, he's only in range of the Smuggler and the Jawa. He's going to go for the Jawa. This is good because he needs to deny the points from this objective. Again, his positioning is a little off. Ezra, if he is within three spaces of a friendly figure, he can re-roll an attack die, but he is four spaces away. So again, the positioning is off by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six damage. It would be plenty to kill this Jawa. So a extra evade gets added by Onar to keep him alive. Pretty shifty play there by Morpheo, the Spanish national champion, former national champion. Uh, but he forgot about the Spectre Cell plus one, so still enough. Spectre Cell makes all these figures so much better. So, coming down to the end here. Morpheo needs to find a way to kill Sabine off. Force Surge is going to be able to finish off this smuggler. So Vito is taking out a lot of the little pieces of this list, but he's leaving up the big pieces like Sabine and Onar. Uh, this would be a good time to start the round with Pummel. Because he can brash up and pummel. I feel like pummel is just a great card for Ezra. Especially when you're guaranteed to have initiative. A big pummel here could easily kill Sabine. Jabba has yet to go. So Jabba will probably order a hit against Sabine, from Sabine. Jabba is actually really good on this map because his order hits get the extra weapon attack.
Hera actually is pretty important. She can get line of sight to Onar. One, two, three, four, five spaces away. We all know that Hera can miss from five, but she does have an opportunity to deal some damage to Onar. And of course, Spectre still has still not been tapped yet. Maybe Vito doesn't know about that ability. I'm not sure. So he's going to get a bunch of attacks off. It's possible that he wins the game because what does he have to do to win the game? He needs to get kills on, let's see, Sabine would be 7, putting him at 29. Onar is 6, putting him at 35. He controls one objective right now. So that would be 38. So maybe instead of pushing Hera up to attack, he keeps her back. But he still does have to find a way to get these kills. So he's actually at 27. I guess he didn't count something. So that means he only needs to kill Sabine and Onar, and he wins. Uh, let's see. The objective, does it even help him at all? Let's see. If he gets two objectives, that puts him at 33, so then he only has to kill Sabine. So... Yeah, that should be his thing. He should get two objectives and try to kill Sabine. He gets an extra attack. He should have used his attack already, to be honest, with uh, Splinter Cell or Spectre Cell before Morpheo got the opportunity to bring 3PO up. This is going to be a close game. It comes down to the wire. Morpheo, all he needs to do is kill uh, Ezra. And play Rebel Graffiti. Don Vito similarly has a path to victory. Don Vito has a slight advantage because he's going first. If he has something like Pummel, it could just be game over. This is an ordered attack. Looks like Onar is attacking Sabine. Uh, it's a blank 1, 2, 3 range, so it's going to be 5 damage. 4 damage. Um, this would be a nice time to tap Doubt to reroll that blue die to negate 4 damage. Just saying. So again, Doubt is way ahead compared to Extra Armor at this point. In fact, Vito has been forgetting to use his Extra Armor block tokens when he should. That was a good opportunity to do it. To do it. Looks like only one card draw for each player. Era would have had a fine activation to play planning here. That is another card that we're trying to figure out if it has value in the deck. Of course it has value, but exactly how much compared to other cards. Okay, and now a tools for the job attack. 
coming from Sabine, I guess. Oh, uh, not sure why Ezra's moving off of the objective. This is going to help Morpheo a bit. He doesn't have to do those movement points. So why is he? But he is going to add a red die. He's going to sink his attack into Onar. I'm not sure where he's going to try to find that extra point to win, but he needs to get seven plus the two objectives he's on. So I'm not sure why is he attacking Onar, especially because now his line of sight is blocked for his Sabine. That is a massive attack. Onar can't even add anything to reduce the damage. Six, seven, eight. Oh, he rolled too many yellow dice, maybe? Or is he, did he re-roll something? That would have been six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten damage. Why did he re-roll? Now it's just eight. Really, I'm not sure what Don Vito is doing here unless he's holding like celebration or something. Because he should have gone for Sabine. I know he risks the dodge, but he needs to add up how many points he needs to get to 40. He's almost there. And now he's moving two more. I'm not sure where these movement points are coming from. I'm a little lost on what just happened. Spectre Cell did get tapped, but it should only be two movement points, and it looks like he took four. Maybe he just decided he wanted to move those two originally instead of where he was. But no, that's not possible because he rerolled an attack die, so he must have been three spaces away from Sabine. I'm not sure how he possibly moved back. Um, Onar is in trouble, but Morpheo can afford to lose him. The real trick is Don Vito cannot lose his Sabine. If he loses his Sabine, it's game over. So he's going to have to go ahead and activate Sabine first and run her away. Oh, he's going to play. Morpheo is playing second chance right now on his own arm. Which means even if Don Vito finds the killing blow here with Ezra, he's going to need another two damage to finish him off. Heart of Freedom is coming out on Ezra, or Sabine, rather. She recovers two health, and she gets two movement points. I'm sure she's going to tap Rebel High Command to get Ezra to attack. Second Chance honestly isn't that good against Sabine, because if Ezra gets the kill, Sabine can attack. If Ezra doesn't get the kill, Sabine can grenade and then attack. And if Ezra doesn't get the kill and doesn't put Onar within grenade range, then Sabine can attack to get the kill and then try to grenade to finish off that last two health. So either way, there's a lot of options. Um, Vito does start with the grenade, which is the mistake. He should have started with the Ezra attack. Uh, the grenade really doesn't buy you anything there. 
Uh, now, he's got to decide if he wants to attack with Ezra first or Sabine. I think Ezra has a stronger attack, so that's who I would go with. Yeah, he, he really wasted that grenade there. Um, another interesting thought here, this would be a really useful time for Hera to come up and use Strength in Numbers because then Hera, Hera's uh, Call the Shots would get added to this whole thing going on here. Um, so Strength in Numbers I do think is a very good card in this list. Great attack there from Ezra. He doesn't get a reroll. But it should be enough to do five. Oh, actually, two evades from Onar means it's one, two, three, four. It's still five. Second chance gets triggered, which means Onar has two health remaining, but Sabine still has yet to attack. So this is going to put Don Vito at 37. Did I add it up wrong before? Because it seemed like it was at 27. Oh, these objectives only give you two points at the end of the round, not three. That's I was adding up wrong, so... It wouldn't have mattered if he killed Sabine. Big kill here, though. I will say that... Uh, Morpheo is not out of it by any stretch. Sabine's going to get focused. And Java can order her to attack as well. He just needs really one kill to get this victory shored up. Not sure why I used Heart of Freedom on Sabine. Because she's mobile, she could easily retreat behind the blocking terrain and be very safe right next to her own terminal. The heal really didn't help her at all. That spot actually is less safe than at her terminal. Now Morpheo gets a chance to go, he's just going to go ahead with 3PO and focus up Sabine. Um, Ezra really can't finish 
off Sabine in one activation. Not sure what he's going to try to do here. He's also not really threatened by her either, though. He does have 10 health and 2 block tokens, so it's unlikely that she sinks all that damage into him. Really, if he can kill 3PO, the game's probably over for him. All he has to do is secure two objectives at the end of this round. So just kill 3PO and survive, basically. Very close game here. In the Shadows gets played. I'm not sure. I guess that was on Sabine. So she cannot die. Well, yeah, she can actually. Not sure why he's putting her there. He easily could have put her at his own terminal. Right now, she is completely exposed. Maybe he's trying to lure Morpheo in? Ezra's going to come up and probably take an attack on Sabine. If Sabine does go for Hera, or sorry, Sabine, um, that would be the game if he could kill her. So I'm not sure why. Vito is giving Morpheo the chance. Four damage showing there. Not a bad attack, but not a great one either. Then Ezra is going to move and block, I suppose. It doesn't block, though. Morpheo is probably now going to take his big shot at Sabine. Actually, I think Morpheo has just got this because Jabba could also order an attack. I need to think. Sabine has to get this kill or it's game over. Because if Jabba orders a hit, that wouldn't be enough victory points to finish the game. Actually, no, because then Jabba could play. Uh, no, because he's not a rebel figure. Uh, interesting final lines here. He needs this kill. I believe Jabba cannot use order hit or it wouldn't be enough points at which point Don Vito would just win on objectives so 
Wow, and that is a big attack. And a blank. He could have put his Sabine right here. I don't understand why he did not. Very tough ending to that. Very close game. I believe that Vito misplayed it. Um, Morpheo played very well, but I think uh, Vito could have made a couple better plays. So uh, his grenade also wasn't working for him. But uh, our first witnessed look at the Todd squad, a.k.a. Spectre squad, and it's a loss for the Todd squad and a win for mercenary point manipulation. Of course, Morpheo is a very good player, but it's good to see both of these lists in action. They're both going to be popular. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed it a lot, be sure to uh, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.